Breatharianism and Minimalism, Beginner's Concepts. So, hi everyone. I keep getting asked about practical concepts in practicing minimalism, why we do it, and how to start. So I wanted to create a short video that explains and gives some beginner's advice. Now, before you start practicing the concepts I'm going to teach you here, you need to identify your personal why. Is it to reduce stress, uh, save money, create more space, or live a more intentional life? Understanding your own motivation will help you stay committed to your goal. Today, the levels of cortisol, the stress hormone, are at their peak. The average person doesn't have time to rest or to work on themselves because they are bombarded with stress, advertisements, and truly lack personal time and contemplation time. In the end, whether it's breatharianism, minimalism, or a combination of both, the journey towards simplicity and mindfulness is deeply personal. It's about asking ourselves what truly matters and aligning our lives according with our own action. To understand minimalism, we have to look at the concept of limitation and what limitation truly is. We are taught that freedom and liberty are the most important things in life, and we should all strive for as much freedom as possible. In reality, it's a little bit different. Studies show that having too many options creates confusion, that people that live the longest are the people that live a simpler life and usually have the same relationship, the same job, the same friends most of their lives. They're also not big spenders. Society has us running after materialism, money, success, and reputation like it's the most important thing in the world. It's not. Simply put, happiness is the most important thing in the world, and simplicity brings happiness. On a spiritual level, the concept of limitation comes from the experience of the soul that has limited itself to a specific journey, yours, and a short duration of time, your life. Another good example of limitation is marriage. When a person decides to limit themselves to a single relationship in order to dive deeper and have a more meaningful connection, which can then grow into a family. Now, let's explore minimalism. It's a lifestyle that emphasizes simplicity, decluttering, and focusing on what truly matters. By minimalizing distractions, we can create space for self-reflection and personal growth. It's about intentional choices. Let me give you some simple things that you can do right away. Number one, in practicing minimalism, there is the 1990 rule. If you haven't used or worn an item in the last 90 days, and you can really see yourself using it in the next 90 days, consider letting it go, dumping it, giving it away, anything that clears that space for you. Number two, digital decluttering. Unsubscribe from email lists you no longer find to be valuable to you, or your Facebook groups, social media followers, and unfollow accounts that no longer bring positivity or value to your life. You can do the same thing with YouTube channels that no longer sync with who you are. Number three, one in, one out. Whenever you bring a new item into your life, commit to removing one similar item. This practice helps prevent cluttering. Number four, mindful purchases. Before making a purchase, physical or online, ask yourself these questions. Do I truly need this? Will it add significant value to my life? Can I maybe borrow or rent this? Am I going to use this in the long term? You will see that asking these questions and answering truthfully will reduce your purchases and save you time and money. Number five, mindful food reduction. Eat when you are truly hungry and not because you feel like it, which is usually more of an emotional need. Eat what your body asks for. This will help you limit garbage and binging. Okay, so these were just general ideas and guidelines. Remember that minimalism is a process and it's perfectly fine to progress at your own pace. Breatharianism and minimalism both seek simplicity, but they approach it differently. Breatharianism challenges the relationship you have with food, 
While minimalism simplifies your physical surroundings, finding balance is the key. The more I teach Breatharianism, the more I see that people that practice it, even for a few months, have a serious advancement in concepts of minimalism and simplicity. I think this is because food is, is emotional, it's social, it's the one instrument we can use to really change our entire life. It's about changing our beliefs and a mastery of our body and sensations. This is for those crazies like me that seek advancement at any cost. Now, once you get that down, you no longer need others' approvals and you understand that you have everything that you need right here and right now. The common thread in both breatharianism and minimalism is the connection between mind and body. Remember, whether you're seeking to breathe in prana or declutter your life, it's all about finding your own path to a simpler, more meaningful life. Follow my channel for more information and I just want to say I love you and I wish you a pleasant journey.